So when we talk about digestive system, what are we talking about? What are the things that are, what are the, uh, you know, diseases? What are the digestive system diseases that are very common? Um, anyone knows the answer? Please type it in the chat room. Let me have a look. Gastric. Huh? Mm -hmm. A lot of people had gastric now today also. IBS. IBS. Allergy, I think. Food, allergies. Allergies, yeah. Yes, gastric allergies. Come on, everybody, participate a little bit. What constipation? Yes, you know, very good constipation. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. So some of the digestive system that we are that we will be discussing today will include uh, gastro as uh, asphagal reflux disease, cancer, irritable bowel syndrome lactose intolerance, and hiatal hernia. And uh, the most common system for digestive disorders are bleeding. All right, you have bleeding, bloating. You know, your stomach becomes very bloated, very tight, right? Constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, pain. The, a lot of people, uh, when they're anxious, they feel nauseous. All right, nausea and vomiting. So these are very, very common symptoms to show that there is a, uh, there's a digestive problem that you're facing, okay? So let us take a case study. And uh, farting after meals is gas, all right? So that's part of the bloatiness. And when we talk about the stomach digestive system, what are we actually talking about? All right. What are the what are we uh what are the what are we actually talking about, right? When we talk about the digestive system, so when we talk about the digestive system, we are talking about the ecological system of your stomach. All right. So what does the ecological system of your stomach has to do with um with all the symptoms that I have just described? all the digestive diseases. What does your ecological system have to do with it? Anybody? What does the ecological system have to do with your stomach problem? So here is the funny thing, right? In our stomach, there is a homostasis of gastrointestinal microorganism. All right. And now this microorganism is actually threatened by many external factors. Right? I mean, they are inside our stomach, right? But they are threatened by many external factors. So some of these external factors that uh, threatened, threatened them right, um, include simple things, you know, weird things like heat stress, right? Like, um, like the food that you eat, too much chili. You know, like uh, the haze that we are experiencing now. You know, these all these small, small things and allergies. Allergies can cause a lot of this digestive system as well. I don't know if you all know, right? Uh, but uh, disorders related to low levels of of uh, of this kind of uh, you know bad bacteria in your stomach can significantly affect the um, microbiological compositions of the digestive system. And what does this mean? This means that essentially the microbiology of the gastrointestinal tract may be significantly affected by inappropriate keeping system. Uh, this is normally with uh, juveniles, you know, young people, psychological stress, uh, you know, like uh, for adults, a lot of psychological stress or heat stress. So, and you know, one thing that is really funny, if our stomach is not good, right? We it, there, it will increase the risk of metabolic diseases. It will, can reduce our fertility and it can increase the risk of systemic diseases. So you see, for all these reasons, you know, keeping a very healthy digestive system is really important. So when we talk about microbes, right, and uh, the rearing of uh, ruminations, ruminants, in particular, uh, dairy and meat cattle, and these are, you know, like, um, 
you know, the the you know, like like meat cattle, meat cattle or dairy cattle, right? These are important elements of agricultural production. So it's estimated that uh, the number of these kind of animals is about 9.2 billion, all right? Which give rise to all our milk, our dairy product, our beef and all that. And so when this beef, when, when these animals, when they, when they eat the grass, then they kind of like digest a lot of the enzymes from the grass. And then when we use the patty of the, or the dung of these uh, animals, that only eat a certain type of grass or a, a certain, um, you know, a certain type of uh, weed, you know, then what happens is that the, the, the little elements, the trace minerals and trace elements that are located inside this dung that is produced through their digestive tract of the animals is then released into the air. So then when we take the ash of the acne, it somehow acts like an activated carbon, and but it has got more than activated carbon. It's got a lot more things in it. Activated carbon, by the way, can help you with the farts and the bloatiness and all that funny, funny things that many of us experience. It can help us with all that. And then, uh, and then uh, with that, you know, we can go uh, further and uh, we can look at uh, other things like... Uh, um uh, you know like cancer and all that it can it can help that as well uh. okay and and i just want to share with you a video on how the digestive system is stimulated by isochronic tones and uh, how these isotonic tones actually stimulate the digestion so let me just share screen with you on this one wait huh let me just and Just feel your stomach while you're listening to this. You're doing combo. Just imagine there's a fire in front of you and you're listening to this.
and I'm going to stop share for a moment. So how does that sound uh, feel when you're listening to it with your eyes closed? How does it feel? Can you all share with me? Maybe if you don't share, then I'm going to ask you to share. Um, maybe any, you can tell us a little bit how you how you feel. Unmute and just okay. share with us a little bit. Feel a bit uneasy. Feel a bit uneasy yeah. in your stomach, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so did you have dinner just now? Uh, sorry? Did you have dinner just now? Yeah. You have you just had dinner, is it? Uh, yeah. You just, just had, had dinner. dinner, yeah. So you see, so you will have different, different feelings that you will feel in the stomach. So I'll ask another person. Um, Betty, how do you feel? Or maybe another person. Ah, Dr. Chan is here. Dr. Chan, how do you feel? Uh, Dr. Chan is. Uh, Betty, how do you feel when you're listening to the music? I feel very comfortable. Actually, I just had finished my dinner at 7.45. Oh, okay. But you feel very comfortable when, when listening to it and, and you don't feel like there is any, uh, you don't feel any uneasy feeling or anything right, like that, right? I felt very comfortable. Okay, cool. Very good. And so... Do you have any stomach problem previously? Yes, many, many years ago. And now I'm a cancer patient. Okay, all right. On That's chemo. A, you're on chemo. Yes, in the okay. hospital. All right, and have you been doing a lot of uh, homotherapy at all? Actually, what happened was I used to do that when I was staying in PJ. But because okay. of my illness and nobody to take care of me, I've moved to my, I stay with my sister now for a year already. Oh, I have okay. Been, uh, last year, 2022, oh, two, March. Okay, 2022, two, 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 March. Okay, so until from then until now, you haven't really done a lot of homa therapy? Lah. No, no, not yet. Last time I used to, and I bought the dung from Dato Ellen. Okay, all right, okay. But now and I stop doing it already because logistically it's not uh, viable. Okay, logistic. Okay, what we we will be having our uh, acne, uh, you know, group session on Sunday. Is it Sunday, Ah uh, Huiling? Correct. Yes. This Sunday. This Sunday. Uh, six o'clock. Yes. This Sunday, 6 o'clock uh, at Wisma Lipe, uh, which is the rooftop, the rooftop garden there. So you yes. can come and join us. Later, I will share in my uh, slide also. So you can come and join us. Lah, because the, the group energy we're doing together is, uh, is, is stronger, actually, when we do together. Mm. I'll consider because uh, right now I'm immobile. I can't drive, I've got to depend on my transport. Yes. So anyway, yes. there are quite a number of considerations. And this is the first time I'm joining all of you. Maybe. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thank God. I think I've been very blessed so far. And I'm still going on and on. And I always pray and trust that God will show me the way. And I think God did by me joining you all tonight. Thank you, thank you, Betty. You know, I know that you haven't been feeling really well, uh, feeling well, but I hope with this homa therapy and maybe give me gain some insights from this talk. You know, to fight a little bit, give you some motivation to fight the cancer and all that. Well, thank you so much, Betty. You know, okay, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, I would like to talk about something uh, of someone that has got maybe prior gastric issue. Um, anyone has stomach issue or gastric issue? Maybe you can unmute and uh, and, uh, and then let us talk to you a little bit. Actually, my cancer, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, Dr. Lenny, is it? Yes. Uh, actually, my cancer is my stomach. Oh, I okay. Have, I have an eight hour operation in the hospital. And they took out 21 notes from my stomach. 
Oh, and wow. Okay. One, seven of them were cancerous. So I was straight away put on uh, chemo with the drip and all that for six months. Then later on, I followed up with home, uh, they call it home chemo, oral chemo. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Anyway, good. So far, I've been feeling good. And uh, thank God for that. Yeah, thank God. Thank God for that. Definitely. Yeah. It's good that to see you, you know, and please come and join uh, us if you can. Uh, I know there's a lot of things to consider uh, because you've got transport issues and all that. But, you know, uh, join us in spirit on Sunday and okay. join us again next month uh, for our next uh, Agni Hotra, uh, you know, Homa Therapy uh, talk, which I okay. think will be quite helpful. And um, anyone else here that actually has got a uh, a problem with uh, their digestive system or have any questions about the digestive system that they want to ask, this is a really a good place to ask. Maybe I will... Andrew I, is, is a guy that has just gotten his uh, HOMA therapy set. And mm -hmm. it would be great to hear what Andrew has been doing with his coma therapy set. And I know that he's a cyclist and he is very, very active. But, um, you know, Andrew, digestive system. Hey, good evening, Lenny. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Uh, I haven't started using my kit yet, but... The little bottle of uh, acne ash that you gave me, mm. I've been taking it in the mornings uh, as my and as my first glass of water with a half a teaspoon of uh, acne ash. Do you take it with cold water, warm water, or Just hot water? Warm water, warm Good. water. Good. Yeah, and uh, well. Just started since the day you I met you, the day after. <laughs> so it's kind of strange drinking uh, ash-like water. <laughs> um, so I've been noticing my stool. Um, stool looks okay, but usual. I, I, I'm, I'm lucky. I don't have any issues. I eat. I watch what I eat. I eat... Uh, I don't always stuff, I, and I, as you know, I, I burn a lot of my calories through not just not just the cycling, but also a lot of other uh, physical activities on the exercise side. Uh, sleep has been well, um, all is well so far. And, okay, uh, that's I, good. Yeah. And, and you uh, will notice that there is no negative reaction from taking. No, I've, yeah, I've been. Yeah, so yeah, so I've been looking at my, my stool, my urine, my sweat. All's well, uh, and and less body that, odor, less body odor, less sweaty smell. Well, well sweaty is is bound uh, because of the cycling and all, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, I mean, I don't stink, lah. Okay, and I've never stunk. So, so, uh, in so far as the depletion of energy or or electrolytes from the sweating and the hydration, dehydration from cycling, uh, it hasn't been. I mean, I, well, I, I don't mean the. I don't mean I'm under dehydration when I cycle. What I'm saying is no cramps. Uh, uh, I'm observing a lot of these bodily effects since yes. taking the, the, the acne hash, ash. Uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. And I, I, I'll continue to take it until I finish that little bottle. I may need it to be replenished. <laughs> and uh, and and when I begin to to actually have my own acne sessions at home, which I haven't yet, uh, then I would have my own ash, and then will, and then the whole experience would be perhaps more, more, 
combinational yeah? having the acne hotel session and the ash mm -hmm. so so far so far it's been it's been good uh, and I'll continue to take it and, and share with you further observations. So I just want to um, maybe share with you very quickly uh, one testimony. Uh, this is from Poland, yeah? Hold on a second. Let me just share this. So uh, this is Patricia, and this is a testimony that is being done. Uh, let me stop share for a moment so that I can share the sound with it as well. Just one moment, share sound. Okay, good. Um, and this is actually an eco village in Bruria, uh, Aranya. So just one moment, let me play this. She's come to visit us at eco village Bruria, Aranya. Can I ask you, um, how did you find your experience here? Mm -hmm. So from the first time I arrived, I felt really um, Can you see the screen? relaxed. It's a beautiful yes, place on the peripheries of the town near the mountains. Um, the community is very welcoming and um, the experiences, overall experiences about Agni Hotra and our conversation about spirituality, humanity, challenges, being really nourishing. Um, so yeah, I felt very welcomed. Um, and I would love to come here again. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, would yeah. you recommend that people come to visit us? Definitely, definitely. Even if they are not interested uh, into therapy as yet, or um, just to come and stay to to find their um, find the experiences for themselves, and, and try something new um, and learn from quite knowledgeable people. Yeah. And could you tell me, uh, how was your first experience with Agni Hotra? Mm, this is a big question. Um, it was, so I, I was really curious about the Agni Hotra. Uh, when I came, but I didn't have any knowledge. And Yarek's passion and uh, community, community practices ignited that curiosity in me when I arrived. Um, and I didn't even know if I would if I would if I would pick it up. So uh, when we did it first time, um, it felt like um, I'm embarked on some like very special tool, um, very special practice to enhance my own spiritual development. Um, there was also the, energetically the experience was very. Um, I would say profound. I feel way more energized since I came here, like physically in, in my body. Mm -hmm. um, but experiencing fire as well, and knowing that um, the whole practice is really connected to this place, um, yeah, made me feel quite, um, um, I would say rejuvenated, maybe that's the right word, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so that is um, well, some of the stories that, you know, are, are some of the places that they have, um, they have in, uh, in Poland. So there has been a lot of uh, Agni Hotra practices in, oh, sorry, Joyce, was it too soft? I don't know why it's so soft. But uh, there's been a lot of Agni practices all over the world. And that particular girl that you saw, um, you know, she went to this uh, Agni Hotra retreat in Poland because she was always having stomach cramps. And, you know, every time she have a period, she has stomach cramps. Every time she has gastric, she has stomach cramps. And, you know, and she finds a lot of peace, as you can see, you know, she, um, she finds a lot of peace and she finds a lot of help with her gastric and all her monthly uh, cramps, um, you know, her um, when she was at the retreat and her pain level just went way down uh, compared to when, you know, before the retreat. So I think I didn't quite follow up with her, but I, I think after the, after the retreat, I think she did many, many other, uh, she continued to practice Agni Hotra. She's very diligent. And I think from the last time that I spoke to her, you know, all the pain and all the stomach cramps and all that that she experienced, doesn't seem to be there anymore. So 
I mean, there is no harm, all right, for all of those of you who have a lot of gas in your stomach, who may have some a lot of allergies like gluten allergies and all that, who feels a lot of bloatedness, there is no harm for you to just try this method, try taking it and uh, see how it can help you. Because, you know, I mean, no harm in trying, right? So, and, and if you try and it helps you, then of course it will be very good. So I want to just share again another video with you about how they produce this dung in, uh, in, in Poland. Just one moment. And this is, uh, you know, like how they actually produce the dung and, and the kind of cows that are used so that, I mean, a lot of questions come in asking about, oh, how is the dung produced and all that. So it would be nice for you to just see how it's done and uh, to understand it a little bit. I hope you can hear the music, uh, the sound now. Mm. I'm uh, Jaroslav Pittsburg. I'm here at Echo Village Bulgarania uh, in the south of Poland, near the uh, Tatra Mountains. And here we have um, uh, our beautiful cows, Kalila over here, and over there is Barry. Well, we don't use our cows, of course, like normal people do. We have our cows so that we can uh, produce fresh cow dung and turn that into dry material for Agnihotra, which we then sell all over Europe. We've been able to build the one and only uh, cow dung uh, drying factory um, in Poland uh, so that we can produce tons and tons of uh, cow dung all year round including you know the six months of freezing cold and uh, snowy wet uh, days of winter which we weren't able to do in the beginning. You can see that's how uh, they make the dung in Poland and um, it is made with so much love and so much care and the uh, the you know the cows are special cows and they are allowed to roam free you know and you can see how clean the whole process is and this of course this is then sold all over Europe so when you practice Agni Hotra you are not we're not only practicing it in Malaysia, right? Because, you know, now more and more countries all over the world, um, you know, like in South America, like in Europe, uh, they are actually practicing Agnihotra because they are seeing the benefits, the health benefits of Agnihotra on, uh, on the gut specifically, because when you consume that, it affects your the microbe in your gut. But they're also turning a lot of the Agnihotra ash into different, different types of uh, things like ointment and all that. And I'd like to just uh, share a very uh, short video of how to turn the Agnihotra ash into uh, ointment that you can apply to any parts of your body if you want to, right? So this one is by uh, Monica uh, Koch. I hope I can... Uh, I hope... Uh, you know, the sound will be good, but let me try. Medicinal substance. You can do this the pyramid, the ashes of this healing Agnihotra fire. 
the Agnihotra fire itself is creating all this healing atmosphere but this healing energy is also locked in its ashes so we can take these Agnihotra ashes and make use of it like we would make use of a medicinal substance you can do this easily yourself you do your own Agnihotra and apply afterwards your own Agnihotra ash I can show you how you can manage this at home easily you just take a bit of this ash out of the pyramid and put it in a sieve or strainer you might have this already at home so it is nothing necessary to be especially bought and then just give it slightly through the sift sieve or strainer and you see what a nice powder you are getting this Agnihotra ash powder is the substance from which you can make your own medicines so nothing is sold you do your own Agnihotra you have your own Agnihotra ash and powderize it and then you can go ahead to make your own medicines I want to show you a main point how you can apply it as ointment but you also can make your inhalation you can make it with ghee and mix it with yogurt or honey or many other things please ask us for further information then you can manage all these things yourself at home but now I show you a general preparation which is called Agnihotra Ash ointment you take this Agnihotra Ash from your pyramid give it through a sieve so that you get this nice Agnihotra ash powder as basic substance as the healing of the Agnihotra fire is also sealed in the ashes you have all these healing energies available in a very simple way so you just have this Agnihotra ash powder and everywhere where it goes it starts healing so you can take it on your skin you can take it internally but you also can give it to the soil, to your plants, to your pets, to any animal, any water resources. Everywhere where you give this Agnihotra ash, it will start healing with the same energy as the Agnihotra fire has created it. So, for a general Agnihotra ash ointment, you take one part of Agnihotra ash powder, and give nine parts of ghee to it you can do this per weight so when you have the Agnihotra ash as powder ready you just take the scales what you might have and weight for example one gram of Agnihotra ash you just add it until you have one gram of this Agnihotra ash powder So this is now the amount of one gram Agnihotra ash powder. You take this in any vessel. Best would be glass or wood or ceramic or any natural vessel and give the Agnihotra ash amount into this so that you afterwards can mix it together with the ghee. Now we start waiting nine parts of ghee per weight so as we have one gram of Agnihotra ash powder we take now nine grams of cow's ghee you again can do this easily per weight So you just take enough and when it is a bit too much you can again take out so that you can do a nicely quantity of the ghee and you have the parts one part ghee one part Agnihotra ash and 
nine part of the ghee, like we have it now here. These are nine gram of cow's ghee. So we give this into the same vessel as the Agnihotra ash powder. You can use whatever you have at home. It can be some natural material, not only for the vessel where you mix it, but also for the spoon. So perhaps you have a copper spoon or a wooden spoon or mm. glass. Best to avoid plastic. So better to use any natural material. And now we just simply start mixing it. This is very easy. Every child can do it actually. And in fact, children like to do their own ointments. So you can just can show them how to do. You can just do it yourself or you also can share this with your neighbors, with your friends, so that the help is available for everybody. Because pollution is so much and perhaps soon there is a time coming where so many people will need help. And with help of this Agnihotra ointment, you always have a help ready for any skin disease. You just can apply it very easily. So when you have mixed it, you are already ready with this Agnihotra Ash ointment. It looks a bit black, but it is absolutely no problem, as I want to show you. You take a bit of this ointment, for example, on your hand, and you can apply it now everywhere on your body where some problem is. And you can look, it is only in the beginning some black, but afterwards the body takes it over very nicely. So it is absolutely no problem. You can apply it really everywhere. Best is you take your own trials and have your own experience ready. See how easy it is to be applied and how beautiful it can now help to the skin. This you can do several times per day, morning, evening, but also even three to four times during the day in case you have some severe disease. So you can help yourself with these easy methods. Of course. All right, so that is, uh, you know, uh, Monica Kosh, and she was just teaching us how to do the uh, Anihotra ash ointment, one to nine. Some people say, you know, you can tr you can experiment with different, different uh, percentage, but you need to be a little bit precise about the uh, how much you use so that you can replicate it and you know how to, how to replicate it. But um, with uh, Monica, she always suggests one to nine. Well, that means nine nine grams of acne, uh, uh, one gram of acne hotra ash against uh, nine gram of the uh, ghee. And of course, ghee, when we want to use ghee, we are not going to use all those mix, mix ghee and all that. No, 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 no. You have to use pure ghee, right? In Malaysia, it's quite hard to get pure ghee. But then uh, if you go to Brickfields or any of the Indian shop, be very careful. Make sure you read the label and make sure that it's pure ghee. Because when you want to make ointments uh, using the ash, make sure that it is pure. Another thing that you want to do is instead of using the, um, the you know, the, uh, the ghee, you might want to put the uh, do the same thing and put the ghee into the ash and then after that you roll it into like a little tiny ball like that and then you put it in your coffee stir it and that's your ghee plus uh, plus uh, acne ash coffee and it tastes quite good actually so you might want to try that and so with that and that will help your stomach and all the rest of it as well so with that i will pass the floor back to um uh, Huiling, Huiling, um, I'm so sorry today. I'm not sure why we can't, we haven't been able to reach uh, Dr. Abel, so it seems. And so we don't have a lot of testimonies for you to watch today. But I think uh, what we shared today is something that you can actually do at home. And we really, really encourage all of you to come this Sunday. And, uh, and if you have any questions, I'm really happy to answer any of the questions that you have right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Lenny. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure because we cannot, I cannot, I couldn't get in touch with uh, Dr. Abel. So I, I believe uh, maybe the internet there got problem. Uh, you mind? Because uh, for anyone that want to join us this Sunday, please come because uh, we have, uh, if you want to try out the ash, then just bring along uh, the glass, empty glass bottle then uh, we can distribute uh, the ash that we already uh, filtered for you also. 
So we can show you how to how to prepare the ash that we can actually uh, keep in the jar. Then you, every morning we just uh, take a scoop on it and then uh, you can do that at home as well. Uh, just like nothing is a plastic, just make sure either glass or stainless steel. So anybody got any question? I think oh, I also have one more thing. Eh? You know, yeah. like your your pyramid, right? Your Agni Hotra, the, the pyramid that you have. Don't uh, wash it with water and soap and all that, right? So you just, if it's dirty also, never mind. Just leave it as it is. Don't, you know, clear away the, 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 the remnants of the uh, burnt, uh, you know, the burnt rice and all that. But don't like scrape it all out and try to make it as clean as possible because you want a little bit of the residue residue in there because if you if you use a scraper to scrape you might actually damage uh, some of the copper so don't do that yeah and also one of the seafood say that the important is don't don't bang don't don't bang the the cop, the pyramid on something yes. just to try to take out whatever the residue because it will affect the shapes of the pyramid <laughs> this is taught by uh, victor uh okay any more questions can uh check with us actually um, acne ash got a lot of uh, usages. You can use it as a spray also for even uh, mopping the floor, <laughs> cleaning the floor, cleaning house also. Actually, sometimes we do also, besides watering the plant, actually we use it for the whole house. So a lot of practical... If you put a little bit of acne ash in, in your clothes cupboard and you like, you know, and you put like a cloth over it, it's a really good dehumifier of yeah, help so, yeah, so you don't get moles around your around your cupboard. Yeah. So we can we can discuss like, we can we can how we actually use it our daily life. So um I will inform maybe Dr. about next next our next session actually in uh, November one uh will be on degeneration and uh, degenerative diseases. Um I think aging is is something that human can't avoid. So as as we age, um, what come the the by diseases that come along? Then how can we uh deal with that with uh, homotherapy will be our next uh, topics. So I think I will inform Doctor Abel maybe to to add on the the videos that we he missed out uh, today. So maybe the next session we will we will add on into that. So our next one our next session will be um uh, in November. The second Friday again, we will meet everybody at eight o'clock. Okay, uh, same. Uh, we will share the link with everybody. We will do two Zoom, and then uh, this is our this coming Sunday. This is uh where we were going to meet, which is on a uh, rooftop of Wisma Light Cat Sunday. Uh, you can come at about six or six fifteen. If this is the first time, you can come earlier at six o'clock. Uh, please bring along uh your water tumbler and also a yoga mat. Uh, because we are going to uh, sit on the floor and then uh, just uh, do together exactly like how the photo this was taken at a rooftop of 360 uh, uh, which and is you can, you can also do like a sleeper also better with sleeper yes because uh, it's better to remove the sleepers and uh, just uh, do it uh, without without any shoes mm. so this is how we plan we'll do it together so it's our monthly group acne will be two days after our web webinar. And uh, if you want to know more, uh, our other events, our future event, you can uh, feel, please feel free to join us. Okay, I have shared our past uh, five series um, of a webinar uh, on different topics, different illnesses. So um, please feel free to uh, view back when you're free uh, is about all the compilations from, um, I think all over the world on different illnesses that we have discussed for the past few months. So I have shared in our group chat already. So thank you everybody for your time tonight. So we will see everybody in November again. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you.